once a physician realizes that they have PANDAS, this pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder, or they potentially might have it, then the next question is, do they have autoantibodies uh, and do they have antibodies to the group A streptococcus? And so uh, a sample of their blood is taken uh, so that the blood can be tested for um, antibodies against the strep to see if they previously had a streptococcal infection, and many children have, and then uh, also to test to see if there might be autoantibodies or antibodies that are against, that would bind to brain. And so we test for antibodies that might attack a child's brain. Uh, by simply uh, testing them in our assays against components of the brain that uh, we know are recognized by antibodies in pandas. And so these, uh, of course, are biologic names, but we, we test for antibodies against uh, tubulin, which is the major uh, internal protein in the brain, like myosin is in the heart. Uh, tubulin is the main protein uh, inside cells in the brain. And so we use that because we know that antibodies to tubulin are elevated, and likewise to the lysogangliocide, which is a gangliocide that is also enriched in brain, and also we know reacts uh, often uh, with antibodies in uh, children with pandas. Uh, and then uh, after that, several years after we discovered um, uh, th those two antigens, then we also discovered that the dopamine receptors, D1 and D2, uh, were targeted by these antibodies. And this actually made more sense in a way uh, that these were um, antigens in the disease, just like in an encephalitis for the uh, NMDA receptor antibodies, which of course is a scientific term, is just another type of encephalitis, that why wouldn't there be several types of encephalitis so that there is the one to the NMDA receptors where those are attacked in one encephalitis, and the one we study in pandas, the dopamine receptors are attacked in our type of encephalitis. And you might ask, you know, well, what might these antibodies do? And of course, I already uh, have talked uh, previously about how they signal. And they just bind to a cell and make it do something it really shouldn't be doing. And so they may make a cell make too much dopamine, or they may bind to a cell and make the receptor or components on the cell become ooh, just super sensitive to um, the um, effects of components in the brain. Uh, the neurotransmitters are like dopamine and glutamate. They are found in the brain. And so if receptors are made to be just super sensitive, or say 50 or 100 times more sensitive to their neurotransmitter, then it will make the cell go crazy. And if a cell is making too much of a neurotransmitter caused by antibodies, then this will really make a child sick where you're making too much of the neurotransmitter, and yet the antibodies are making the receptor even more and more sensitive to that neurotransmitter. So it's, uh, it's certainly understandable why a child might go crazy. And so to detect whether uh, a child has these types of signaling antibodies in their blood is really, really important uh, because this detects the functional activity of the antibody. In other words, could the antibody actually cause disease? Does your child have antibody that could cause disease? And I think this is being found to be uh, pretty important uh, in uh, treatment sometimes, uh, really quite often, that the antibodies uh, that signal go down after uh, children improve and don't have symptoms. I know in our Korea patient here, our Sydenham Korea patient, uh, they had very high CAM kinase activity uh, caused by the antibodies uh, at the beginning of their disease and when they were very sick. And then when they came back in three and six months, the antibodies uh, went down 